I honestly don't know exactly what I said, but I, I was hyped up for him. It, it was funny because that we had some plays designed for him to score. In the, uh, but if you would have told one play that I didn't think he was going to score on, it was that one. But uh, it, it was it was it was cool to see. I mean, everybody was excited for him. Um, luckily, he didn't run out of bounds. He was getting close there on the sideline. Um, I actually heard him as the route was going on, going "Hey!" because he was wide open. So that that helped me out a little bit. <laughs> Design or just kind of a, a, a stray thing that worked out? Yeah, it was. I mean, obviously, it's obviously in the play design. It's like the fifth read. So it, we, he was kind of the distraction guy, trying to bring kind of guys over. And then I wanted to kind of go flat to the stick route to the over to Kels. And then I heard him yelling, and I was like, man, oh, who's yelling at me over there? I looked over, and he's wide open. So it was, he was going to like the last read in that play. Um, but in this offense, that last read might be open sometimes. So you got to stay, stay ready for it. Why do you think it's it's come so easy for him, or seemingly so uh, so far here in KC? Yeah, I mean, first off, he's a smart guy. I mean, he learned he learned a lot fast, and uh, we've been able to put him in positions, uh, especially a lot more this week. Um, but uh, he's a smart guy, he plays hard, um, and w whenever he's got his opportunities, made plays happen. And uh, this offense is, like I said all year, it's going to be everywhere. And I think you saw that again today. Um, guys stepped up and made plays happen, and uh, that's that's the special part about this offense. Follow up on that. Yeah, I was excited for him because he's made a lot of big plays happen, and I, I felt like I've kind of un, not under underthrown, but underthrown him enough that he hasn't had some of these big play touchdowns that you expect from him. Um, and so for him to to another play where he's not necessarily the first read, but working his way, getting himself open, um, and making a play, uh, I'm excited for him because he's he's kept it going. He's kept even though he's not scoring touchdowns, he's making himself ready and available. And I mean that's that's a big part of this offense. Do you, do, do you subconsciously sometimes? Yeah, I try my best this year to not try to do that. I, I let Coach Reed call the plays, uh, Coach Bianami call the plays, um, and I let the game come to me. And I think that's helped me uh, be even more efficient this year. Um, and now, if I can just stop throwing dumb fourth quarter interceptions, I'd have some good games. Patrick, um, what do you think of the hit on Jim? Yeah, I mean it's tough, man. Um, obviously. I don't think there was like any ill intent from the player. I mean, he's just trying to knock the ball loose and, and do stuff like that. Um, but uh, obviously, there was some helmet to helmet contact, and um, we we want to get that out of the league as much as possible to keep the, for player safety. Um, so if we can review that and kind of make it to where there can be some type of penalty or something, uh, I mean, obviously, you want to get that stuff out of the league as much as possible. Can you clarify? Do you mean to make that reviewable or? Do you think no, no, I don't. I don't it, it, it's so it's so hard in this league, man, because these guys on defense are playing too. They're trying to do their best to stop us. Um, but, I mean, by the rules, I mean, if it's helmet to helmet, it's supposed to be a flag. And uh, I know that guy wasn't trying to. Um, and I know it's a bang-bang call that doesn't always go your way. Um, but you want to do your best to try to get that stuff out of the league so that we can have those guys out there playing and being safe. Did you talk to Juju after the game? In the, in the game, you know, you got the hand off the ball a little bit too mm. much. A little more involved in the game. Looked like he was the key guy at running back. How, I suppose last week, now with this week, having him help out, how, how much help was that? Yeah, he stepped out and had a big game. I mean, especially, you'd like to see guys respond. I mean, he, had, he was running the ball really well in that first drive and had the fumble. Um, and some guys can shut it down. And uh, we kind of went right back to him, let him keep running it, and he, he stepped up. And so um, that's a great running back room. Um, we got a lot of guys that play well. And when the offensive line is protecting like they were doing today and, and run blocking like they were, that makes our team really, really hard to stop. From where Pacheco was in, in camp and OT, Not, not, not really. I mean, he's he's a he's a super he's a smart guy as well. Um, this offense is hard, especially on that running back position, uh, to learn because you have to do all the protections, you have to do all the routes, you have to run the ball, and we have different type of run schemes. And so, for for him, he's he has all the talent in the world. So now he's just going to continue to get better and better as he learns those little tricks of the trade to kind of go out there and and make stuff happen. Where you might this this read might not be exactly how it was scouted on during the week, but how can I make this run work? And as he gets more and more reps, he'll get even better.
Patrick, did you have you seen Juju after the game or at halftime? You get a chance to talk to him yet? Yeah, I, I got I got to talk to him. Uh, I mean, obviously it was scary uh, when you're out there, um, but I mean, we saw him after the game. He seemed perfectly normal. Uh, I mean, it's just it's just uh, he'll. I'm sure I don't want to say anything about the injuries. He'll sure have to do something to get himself back available for us, um, which is I mean the right thing to do. Um, but uh, he seemed like he was his normal self, giggling around, joking around, and stuff like that. And uh, let's just take precaution and get him back healthy as fast as possible. Threw a flag and picked it up on that play, and then on the, on the interception you threw, they threw a flag for roughing and picked it up. Did you get an explanation on why they picked that one up? The roughing one wasn't roughing, so that's probably why. Um, but uh, I wish it was, so I didn't have an interception. But uh, but it, it wasn't. Um, the the one where he got the helmet to helmet, I, I believe they were saying something about he was leading with his shoulder. Um, but I mean, it's. You, I know. I know those guys aren't trying to helmet to helmet hit guys. I mean, we've we've preached that in this league, and we've we've tried to take care of each other. We want to play hard and compete, but we're trying to take care of each other out there on the field. But uh, I mean, it, from the review, it looked like it was helmet to helmet. So I'm sure they'll review that. They'll make their changes and come back better next week. You don't often see teammates kind of insist on helping an injured teammate off the field, but it looked like Mark was and Travis kind of insist on helping Juju to the sideline. What went into that moment? Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, we have a, a brotherhood here. I mean, uh, it's been fast because it's been a lot of new guys, but I think these guys, we're all best friends. I mean, we're, we're, we're doing stuff together every single day. We're playing Call of Duty at night. We're, we're guys that we, uh, that we want to go out there and compete with each other um, and, and, and be the best that we can be. And so to see that, I mean, it just t- tells you that these guys love each other out there on the field, and we'll go out there and we're going to go down fighting together. Patrick, I talked to Orlando this week, and uh, after Mario Douglas said going against some of the great uh, players that he's played up against this week, I don't think Yeah, I think they've accepted the challenge these last few weeks. I mean, even last week, whenever there were sacks, there was more coverage stuff. It wasn't on the offensive line. I was holding the ball too long and stuff like that. And uh, that's another great defensive line we face today with first-round draft picks, guys that are big, uh, fast, um, physical, and they did a great job running and and pass protecting. So I think as the season goes on, offensive lines, especially with the rules in training camp, they get better and better, at least the, the really good ones do. And I think you see in our offensive line as the season goes on become that elite group that we all expected. Patrick, there was, sorry, there was, uh, it seems like just a little more on Kadarius, this is about as fast as you've developed a rapport and a trust with somebody, and I know you spoke to it a little bit, but what's the biggest challenge for him to be able to do what he's, he's doing, and for you to trust him like this already? I think the biggest challenge is, I mean, it's, I don't know if you, it's a challenge. I think it helps that he was kind of in a similar offense in, in New York. I mean, Kafka's there, so he, he understands some of the words, and it kind of clicks to him about stuff like that. But, I mean, ever since he's been here, he, he's got to be in that, that facility just as much as I have. I mean, he's getting, making sure he knows the splits. He's making sure he knows exactly the route uh, combinations, the different audibles that we have at the, on the offense. And, um, I mean, when you have a guy that's that talented, that wants to learn and get better and better, uh, those are those special players that you want on your team. All right, thank you. Rackham.